Uh, in this video, I'm going to start um, talking about this book here. It's a book, or it's actually a report printed by the government. It was, um, it come about during the Eisenhower administration where he put together a committee, like you see here, a committee um, who put together tons and tons and tons of information. And the committee was put together in 1953. And um, what they're trying to find out in this book is what exactly does the Constitution mean? What does it say? And uh, they compiled all the information from all the attorney generals in all the states, uh, case law, and a variety of other things. And so if you want to know what the Constitution really means and what states are and all this stuff, then you can download this <clears throat> report. There's part one, which was printed in 1956, and part two was printed in 1957. And it's called Jurisdiction Over Federal Areas Within the States. You can get it from Hathi Trust, and you can get it from archive.org. Um, Hathi Trust is H-A-T-H-I-T-R-U-S-T dot org. And it's um, jurisdiction means power and authority. So you're going to hear that word a lot. And so you need to write this down on a piece of paper somewhere if you want to follow along in these videos. And um, jurisdiction is is defined in this country with a capital J and then the the definition the meaning is power or authority and it's got a capital P and a capital A in the old 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 dictionary where you find it so um, if you look to the Constitution and I'll pull it up if I can find it here on my desktop the, cap, the P in power and the A in authority is always capitalized. <clears throat> what that means is that it's not used arbitrarily. It's used um, proper. Okay, that's a proper meaning. So it's not talking about just any random power or any random authority that the legislative um, powers vested in Congress of the United States are. It's talking about very specific things. And those specific things are laid out here in the Constitution. Authority is also in this document. And it is capitalized as well. Every time you see power and every time you see authority, they, they are capitalized. And that has, um, that has meaning. Okay, so the meaning, like I said, is that it's, it's proper. It's specific. It's well defined. That's why they mean, that's what they mean when they say the Constitution uh, limits the federal government. The powers are specific and well defined. Okay, because the A, the capital A, means that it's a proper noun, means that it's very speci specific, and it's specific to what's in the Constitution. So the federal government has done a lot of things that are outside the power and authority that is jurisdiction outside of the Constitution. And this report lays a lot of that out. <clears throat> so let's um, search power in the Constitution. And we have a whole list of them. So I'll just go quickly. You can see the highlighted here, power of impeachment. Power to trial impeachment. Power to lay and collect taxes. See, this is a specific power. That doesn't mean it's specific to the federal government. It means that Congress has the specific power to lay and collect uh, taxes and duties. So this is a specific power. But you see Article 1, Section 8. This is why this is very important to read this section. But you have to read it all the way through. And that's that there's no periods in the entire section until the very end. That means all these things go together. It's, it's a list of things that they can do. So it's Congress can do it. But Congress wasn't given power over the United States of America. 
if you look up here in Article 1, Section 1, power was given to Congress of the United States. Okay, that means that they don't have arbitrary power over the entire country. They have power over, <clears throat> it's laid out here, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, the district, which has got a capital D, which shall be the seat of government, the capital S, meaning a specific place, government, a specific type of government of the United States, okay, that's a specific um, a type of government at a place for certain things, United States, and a, like authority, specific authority over places, specific places purchased, not all places, but specific places purchased for, okay, the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, which these things are for defense purposes, and that's defense with a C, not an S. Okay, so this is, you want to go and read this. You can get this um, Constitution. I'll stick a link. I'll stick a link in the um, description so you know exactly what Constitution I'm looking at. And it's the one from a government website. And it's the one, it's an organic law. It's used in here. Okay, it's the same one. It's got all the proper punctuation just the way the original was. I have a facsimile of the original. Okay, and it looks, as far as I can tell so far, exactly the same. War, specific war, okay? So these places, erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, and dockyards are for specific things, which is in the preamble, Defense with a C, not with an S. Defense with an S has a completely different meaning than defense with a C. And doing that is for the, the establishment of specific justice for specific people, tranquility, general welfare, blessings of liberty. Those are their goals to themselves and their posterity. Okay, the common defense. So when you go down here to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, forts, okay, forts. To fortify yourself is something that a good government does for its people. A good government does this. When you have a bad government doing bad things, that's not a government. That's something else. That's evil tyranny. Just like a bad king is not a king anymore. He, he forfeits his right to be king once he starts being bad because he's using his power for purposes that he wasn't given it for. Just like when Lincoln um, did away with the right of habeas corpus. When he did that, he lost his power to do away with the right of habeas corpus because that power was actually left to Congress. And so he was exercising a power outside of what was in the Constitution. And when you, when you wield a power that you were not given, you forfeit the right to have any power at all. Okay? So acting outside of the Constitution does not turn off the Constitution. You can't do away with the Constitution. The Constitution is not silenced or any of these other strange things that people say because when they do that, they're no longer uh, in power. So anytime Congress acts outside of the Constitution, they're no longer in power. Anytime the president acts outside of the Constitution, he's no longer in power. And that's called being a bad government. Bad governments don't have power, only the good governments. And everything in the Constitution is good when it's applied correctly. When it's misapplied, that's a bad government. <clears throat> So 19 submitted to the Attorney General and transmitted to the President, April 1956. So this first video, I'm hoping to make these videos short so that people can listen and then go back and listen to them again if they don't understand, think about what they heard, and then eventually go on to the next video. This is not something that you need to rush through. Um, and I say that because there's been so much... Um, misinformation about what is and what isn't. And they had to do that to get you to 
become prey to the bad government and accept the bad government and and th believe that the bad government is actually the right government when it's not. So jurisdiction over federal areas within the states, chapter one, outline of study. Okay, now Ron Paul recently mentioned um, Eisenhower in one of his Liberty Channel videos and what a what a good guy he was. And I've heard a lot of stuff about some of Eisenhower's speeches and how John Kennedy um, took some of those ideas that John that Eisenhower mentions and he put them out in his speech also, such as the military industrial complex, where someone else had further explained that the military industrial complex was actually the corporate complex. Um, and that goes along with all this stuff that I'm talking about. And so hopefully I'll be able to explain it. If you don't already understand, I'll be able to explain it here in this video, but I'll continue to explain it in other videos also. So the, this study was done because um, there were the denial of a group of children of federal employees residing on the grounds of a Veterans Administration Hospital. Okay, so <clears throat> now I've been to a few places. I'm a veteran, and so I've been to some of the veterans hospitals, and I've seen a few things, and I can tell you that um, at Leavenworth, Kansas, there's a big, huge, old, old um, veterans hospital. And um, they have housing on it for all their doctors and nurses, some of the people that are veterans who are injured, um, and their families. So they lived in the houses on the federal lands that were donated by the state to the federal government for federal purposes. The hospitals was one of them. Now, these hospitals weren't always there. There was a time when they didn't even have hospitals. Okay, so one of the things that came up was even after they had wars and they had the veterans hospitals and they had, um, when I say federal employees, I'm talking about officers and employees of the federal government. Officers and employees of the federal government, and it's... Um, Interesting, I don't have this website up. I almost always have this website up, O-L-R-C. So I just Google O-L-R-C, and um, the first one that comes up is uscode.house.gov, and I click on that. I mean, I should know this. I should just be able to type it in by now because I go here so many times a day. My computer's so slow, which is going to make this video seem longer than it actually is. I click on here and I go here to Title V and I'm not going to talk about positive law uh, citations and this is positive law meaning the title which titles are just editorial compilations so this doesn't have a positive law citation this does meaning this has been made into law the entire title has been made a law this one domestic security hasn't so if you want to look more into that and go through the list, watch one of my other videos. <clears throat> so um, these government people, they're officers and employees of the federal government, okay? And you can read more about them in Title V if you choose. If you want to read more about the federal lands, you can go to um, Title 40, okay, which has been made positive law because it's in the Constitution and Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, Okay, places purchased for federal purposes, not to wield tyranny over all the people. Okay, so these employees that were living on the federal lands were um, deprived of the opportunity of sending their children to schools off the federal lands. Now, all the federal lands in one state is considered a state. So I've been putting a lot of thought into this and trying to figure out um, how can I explain to people what a state is? Because state is used generally in the Constitution, um, but it's used generally for a specific place. And I know that's just a little bit difficult to understand, but let's think of state as something that you made, something you created. So your family is a state. Your home is your state. Your, if you create a business, that's your state. 
and what you create you control. So the inhabitants of a certain area of land called a territory created a state and that's called the independent state. That state created the federal government. The federal government is dependent on the states to exist. So it's a dependent state to what created it. Now the federal government created states um, on the lands that they purchased inside the independent states and the federal government is independent of those things that it created so its states its states are the federal lands for federal purposes defense d-e-f-e-n-c-e -E, for fortifications military reservations because that's what a good government is supposed to do it's supposed to fortify itself it's not supposed to uh, institute corporations and then corporations use the federal government to force us into contracts. That's not what it's supposed to do. So the children were deprived of the opportunity of attending schools off federal lands, a dependent state, on the lands in the independent state. Okay, the state of the settlers and inhabitants. So what the settlers and inhabitants created, they controlled. They didn't want these people coming off the federal lands and using their schools because when they moved onto the federal lands, they were no longer state taxpayers. There were federal taxpayers, and these were the people, the federal officers and employees, who were federal taxpayers from the get-go. And they still are required to pay federal taxes. Everybody else is uh, a voluntary taxpayer. That's because we don't live on the federal lands, okay? They live on the federal lands. They pay, they pay a federal tax because they derive a benefit. State people pay a state tax because we derive a benefit. Public schools, public roads, public hospitals, okay? So that money gets divvied up so that those services can be provided for the people. But when these federal employees, we look at them as officers and employees, but they actually had to change their citizenship status and become either born or naturalized in the United States. The United States are the federal lands, okay? <clears throat> I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but let's just stick with that. The, these people became they changed states. They changed states from where they were, this whatever state they were in, the inhabitants of the state they were in to become inhabitants of the federal areas, which made them federal citizens. Now they had to apply for citizenship in the federal courts, I'm sorry, in the state courts, because in order to get citizenship, they had to ask the state and the state had to approve it. And the reason why was because back when the constitution was first ratified, um, the states understood that they were supposed to choose their federal officers and employees who resided on the federal lands inside their state. So back then, the states had a lot of control. <clears throat> they don't have that now through a variety of usurpations of power. In my opinion, done mostly since the Civil War, um, Napolitano says since before the ink dried and Patrick Newman, who speaks with the Mises Institute and has a few videos out, says uh, it only took eight years. Okay, so I haven't done a lot of digging into that, but so far what I've seen is, is Lincoln and the Civil War did a lot of bad things to the country. Okay, so let's get back to this and see if we can get this done. Um, so these federal people, these federal citizens on these federal lands were confined to these federal lands, and so they didn't have a place to send their children to school. So they went into the state and they sued in the local court and the local court said, no, go back to your federal lands and you build your own schools over there. But building schools is not in the constitution. So they couldn't do that. And actually these hospitals are not in the constitution, but they did that I think through the other necessary uh, things. So after uh, they lost in a local court, to use state services, they um, sued in a su Supreme Court of the state and they lost again because uh, they had no right to use things that they didn't pay for. 
that's when we got the 14th Amendment, where it made the federal citizens also state citizens so they could use the, the services in um, the state to which they didn't pay taxes to. So then when they did that, it allowed the states to tax the federal citizens. So what they do nowadays is they call us all federal citizens, and we all agree that we are, even though we're not. Okay, the decisions were based on the ground that residents of the area on which the hospital was located were not residents of the state. Because when someone applied to be um, a citizen on federal lands, he, he, according to the Constitution, was no longer a citizen of the state, or, or they called it an inhabitant of the state. So he left being an inhabitant of the state, moved on to the federal lands. He received his benefits and privileges as being a federal taxpayer, and um, he lost the privileges of being a state person. And the reason why was because the states on the areas for defense with the sea purposes only gave up all jurisdiction. Now remember, jurisdiction is power and authority to make any laws over the federal areas. That's because when you have a military and all this, these federal areas were originally intended to be for military purposes. When you have a military, you have to move in unison. You have to. That's how militaries work. You can't have this state doing this and this state doing that and this state sending their military over here and there's a battle going on on the other side of the country and there's troops over there and troops over here and nobody knows what's going on. So they created a central command basically called the seat of government, Washington District of Columbia, which could administer all the military areas inside the states to protect all the states equally. The military is somewhat of a socialist form of economy. And I say that because they all are treated the same. Three gods and a cot, uniforms, weapons, training, etc. Okay, so they're all treated the same. Um, nowadays, you join the military, you have just as much opportunity as any other person in the military. You take your tests. Um, if you pass your test and you have your time and grade, meaning your um, time as an apprentice, you can take, sit to take the test. You take the test. You pass the test. They take the highest, um, uh, the highest grades from the test, and they promote however many people they need based on the test. Now, it's the same thing with officers. It's the same thing with enlisted um, enlisted people can become officers. I've known a few of them. They're called Mustangs, where they start as enlisted and they end up as an officer. Um, but that's really neither here nor there. The thing is, is that the military moves in unis unison. They have to have a central command, and that central command was supposed to be, in my opinion, based on all the things that I've read, the seat of government. And then the areas inside the states that were purchased by the federal government were supposed to be for those military, um, for, for the military, for use for military purposes. And that was the only reason why the federal government was allowed to purchase lands inside the states, just for defense, in order to do the things in the preamble, promote liberty, um, general welfare, tranquility, and, and all those things. So all the stuff that the federal government does in the list in Article 1, Section 8 is supposed to be for um, the federal people on the federal lands. So commerce, of course, they would control commerce on the federal lands because if I have a home, I want to be able to control what comes on and off my home. And it doesn't matter if I have half an acre or if I have 10,000 acres. I want to be able to control everything that comes on and off my land. And that's a basic, a very basic right. So the federal government wasn't given any, any um, extra rights as far as controlling what comes on and off your land or being able to charge for what comes on and off your land. If I grow crops on my land, I want to be able to charge for what goes off my land. If I have a, a dairy farm and, and um, I'm milking cows, I want to be able to charge for what comes off my land, either as it's going off my land or 
once it gets stocks, stocked in the stores and it gets sold, I want to be paid for that. It's the same with the federal government. They have a right to um, charge for the things coming on and off their land. Um, in post and excise, they want to be able to tax things uh, coming on or off their land that they didn't create. So um, you have copyrights. And copyrights are the right to hold, um, to be, uh, because these people lived on the lands. They lived on the lands, uh, the federal lands, the entire time that they were with the federal government. So these were, it's like a country inside of a country. So you have all of Europe and then you have all these other countries inside of it. And then inside the countries, they have states. It's basically the same thing in the United States of America. We call them states, but you could look at them as little countries. Well, in some cases, very big countries. As Texas's economy is um, greater than that of Europe's, uh, last, I, last I knew. And uh, so these people, they lived there permanently. This was their permanent residence. They resided there on these lands. They stayed there. They were citizens of this place. Okay, so, so the state says that because the federal government purchased the lands, they were given all the rights over the lands. So exclusive legislative jurisdiction, given the rights over the lands meant that they were made, allowed to make the laws for the lands. And in the constitution, we see that the laws that they wanted um, are listed in the contract. So I'm trying to pull up the constitution now. <clears throat> which are the, um, there it is, it's already up, it's hiding. Okay, all those things that you think that they're allowed to do to you, but they're not. So power to lay and collect taxes, duties, impost, excise, pay for debts, common defense, general welfare. This is all the things that I would do in my home. Or if I had 10,000 acres or 1,000 acres or 500 acres, these are all the things that I would be able to do as a landowner, okay, on my land. Um, common defense, I have the right to defend my family. I have a right to defend my property and my home, a general welfare to take care of my family, okay? Duties in post excise shall be uniform throughout the United States. So they're saying they're not going to favor one state over the other, that they're all going to be uniform. And by state, I mean the federal areas that they purchase to borrow money on credit. Okay, so I would, I would have that right too, to regulate commerce with foreign nations among the several states and within the Indian tribes. Okay, so I should be able to regulate the commerce that I have with foreign nations. That's called trade. It's covered by the international laws. So they do that on their federal lands. Okay, and they want to be able to regulate. So... When it says regulate commerce with foreign nations, it doesn't say, say that you can't regulate commerce with foreign nations. It's saying that this is what it does for itself from the federal lands. It doesn't say it's taking over the whole country and regulate, regulating um, uh, you know, for, commerce with foreign nations and the states can't. Okay, and how are they using states? Is this a command? Because if this is a command, you can only command what you create. And it created the dependent states for military purposes. And um, so it wants to regulate the commerce that it has with the states. And that doesn't mean that the states can't have foreign commerce with other countries. It's saying that as far as it's concerned, it doesn't want anyone else to interfere with how it, it regulates itself and the commerce it has with states. Okay, so the Indian tribes, uniform rule of naturalization. So they want a rule for naturalization for their federal employees when their federal employees come and work and live on the federal lands. And it does have those. They're called the naturalization laws. The first one, I believe, was in 1790. Okay, and that was to say who was able to come on and off the lands, even though it, they applied. I believe they applied in the state court. If I find something different to that, I'll make sure to mention it. Okay, so they have exclusive legislative jurisdiction over those areas. So 
these are the areas, the seat, which is the District of Columbia, and the lands that they purchase for defense purposes. Okay, and these are all the things that they can do. And then they also want to um, do the other things in the Constitution that they lay out. Okay, so, um, so when the state, the independent state, the state that belongs to the settlers and inhabitants, ceded some lands to the federal government for defense purposes, they gave up the right to make laws for those lands. And that was part of the constitutional contract that's in here to exercise exclusive legislation. This is like a contract. This is the government laying it out, saying this is what we're going to do and we're not going to do anything else. And they're not going to mention everything that they can't do. <clears throat> they're going to mention the things that they can do and what they don't want their states to do. So when they say no state shall, it's talking about the military lands because they were afraid that the military lands and the states were afraid that the military lands would try to become independent states which they can't because they were not given any sovereignty. The military lands were not given any sovereignty. They're still dependent on the federal government, which is still dependent on the independent states that created the federal government. Okay, so they gave up the right to those lands, just like any landowner would expect to have the right to the lands without any interference. Okay, over such areas, you did... Um, by the state to the federal government, and therefore they were not entitled to privileges of state residency. So all these people had to become federal citizens, called citizens of the United States. And I know it's hard to it's hard to get it in your head that you're not a citizen of the United States because you're saying I need a driver's license, I need this, I need that. You don't. They do because when they come off the federal lands, they have to pay a tax and the driver's license. The license is a tax. Any license is a tax. Okay, the tax of the federal people to use state services. Okay, so things like the FDA, the CDC, um, Child Protective Services, um, <clears throat> Motor vehicle and registration, driver's license, mariner's license, all these things started out just as very small things that were required for specific um, purposes to provide for the, these federal citizens using state things. So they were intended for them not for the people off the federal lands because we were already citizens of the states, inhabitants or settlers, and we were, we were only supposed to pay state taxes because we use state services. But when they started providing uh, state services to the federal employees, they realized they could make a lot more money if they got us all to believe that we were all federal citizens or citizens of the United States and we all had to do these things. We all had to get a driver's license, register our vehicles, get all these licenses, which are taxes. It's just a form of tax. And these taxes were supposed to be for the residents so that they could pay a tax and come off the federal lands and use the stuff in the state. And that include that included blacks and whites. Okay, because during this time um, originally, I think the Constitution meant for only white people, and then as time went on, it changed, and it included blacks. So by the time we get to the 14th Amendment, they wanted to make sure that they included blacks and whites, because even on military lands, there was a civil component to all the rules and regulations um, that were supposed to be followed by the military people or um, followed when um, making laws for the military people. It was supposed to be a, it was supposed to have a civil government component to it so that the military people also had a, um, a civil law, okay? So it wasn't just, you know, because they had their families living on the military lands also. And so they had their dependents there. And so there, there was a, civil or civilian, not military component 
to the people on the military lands. So these federal employees and officers were confined to doing all their work and all their living on the federal lands. They weren't originally allowed to come off the federal lands. They weren't even allowed to send their children to school. I suppose they could come off and go shopping, but even originally they had a, a galley and um, they had houses. They were given houses, so they had kitchens in their houses. And I've seen some of these really old houses at like Fort Leavenworth and they're beautiful houses and you know, they're, they're regular houses. They have kitchens and bathrooms and all those things. And so they had these um, people on these lands that they had their families on the lands with them. But their families were not part of the military. So the wives back then, the wives and the children were not members of the military. So you had a civil component to the lands used for defense purposes. And those so civil component applied to the civilians and the civilians are non-military. So you have federal officers and employees. You had some employees that were civilians. They weren't in the military, meaning they weren't um, citizens of the United States, but they were federal employees. They had no time. They had no, um, and when I say time, I mean that they had no um, application in the courts and a court of record to be approved to start your time as being a citizen of the United States, which is required to be a representative, a senator or a president, if you should if you should so choose to have run for office or be chosen to um, sit in one of those offices. So you had um, the federal citizens and then you had civilians on these military posts who lived there and worked there and used um, military post services provided by the federal government. And as a result, you paid a federal tax and your family were the civilians, they were civil, they came under the civil laws of the federal government, and um, they were the wives and children, and they were civilians, they were not military. Okay, so I guess I beat that dead horse a little bit too much, but that's how it works almost now. They've changed the rules so much that they don't even look like um, what was intended by the Constitution. But during the uh, time of the Civil War and the 14th Amendment and um, the change of providing the services off post so that these people could go off post and use the schools and the hospitals and the other various um, services that they needed to be provided for, um, they had to become state taxpayers. And so that's what they did to use the roads. You had to get a license to use, um, the hospitals you had to pay when you went to the hospital to use the, um, uh, to become a merchant mariner, you had to have a license. Okay. So all these, all these things, and, and they've expanded it so much since its original intent that it doesn't even look the same. And I think that's why people can't, for the most part, figure it out because it doesn't look anything like what it was intended. So all these corporations and all these courts and all these um, pretend laws, like all these uh, non-positive ones, are the ones where they were providing services to the military that the Constitution didn't provide for. So domestic security agriculture, aliens, and nationality, because as we started going overseas, some of these men were marrying women of other countries, and the other women were not living on post, and they were not um, becoming citizens, and yet they were married and having children, so they had to provide a way to um, make these people also having some benefits when the, the husband passed away, but they weren't on, they weren't uh, federal citizens. Okay, so you see arbitration, armed forces, and bankruptcy because those things are in the Constitution. Banks and banking is not in the Constitution, but they felt, you know, through time that it was important to provide banks for 
the military people, the federal officers and employees on the federal lands. And then, of course, they, they do a census of all their military stuff, their military equipment, their military personnel. Coast Guard, now, Coast Guard's not really in the Constitution. They've sort of, I think, finagled that to make it, um, to make it law. Commerce and trade, the way they have it, is not in the Constitution, conservation, um, customs and duties. A lot of this stuff, you know, like education, because education was being provided. So this is the federal government's way to provide education to the people on the federal lands. Okay? But they make up all these things where we have to give everybody the opportunity, separate but equal, and it's got to be fair, and everybody has to have the chance, and, you know, that's not really true. They just make these things up so that they can act like they're being saints and providing every child education where this is actually supposed to come from the state. And most people believe that all this education comes from the state and it, or state money, but it doesn't. It comes from the federal government. Some of it may come from the state, but this Title 20... It's how the federal government goes about providing for education, or its original intent was to go to provide education to the um, children of the military people on the federal lands. So this is the civil component to the um, military lands to provide for the people on the military lands, which has expanded and expanded and expanded. And now we all think that we have to use these services which were intended for the um, civilians on the federal civilians and that um, we have to get our children vaccinated and they have to wear masks and all that stuff. And that's just not true. Food and drugs, foreign relations and intercourse. So a lot of these things are run by corporations who need you to say that you're a citizen of the United States, which is a federal citizen, so that you can... Um, so that they can push this on you and say that you have to, which even the citizens don't have to. They don't have to abide by any of these. Citizens, the federal citizens don't. But So tele, telecommunications, um, if you go on any of these um, corporations that are running these things, they all claim to be part of the United States. So the United States are the federal lands. The lands purchased the dependent states. Okay, the dependent states, not uh, the states created by the settlers and inhabitants who actually allowed the government, the federal government, to live and work on their lands, but for defense purposes. Okay, so that's the first paragraph, and I've explained a lot of the background on, on um, the federal citizens and stuff, so I'll go over some of the other stuff here um, in other videos. And so look forward to those and I'm going to call, I'm going to make it a, um, a list of videos and I'll call them jurisdiction over federal areas within the state and I'll be providing different um, levels of proof, different types of proof throughout this document um, that's not mentioned in this document so that you can see uh, what I'm talking about instead of me just explaining. Okay, so like, share, subscribe.